Hi guys. It is a another brutal summer day in South Austin, Texas. We have made it to Friday, June 14th, 2012. Uh, I just did a rant. Uh, I mean, I just finished it one minute ago about uh, a fine documentary uh, about Mayan Indians. Uh, you can go look at that. But as I was telling the rant, this is this is crazy ass story occurred to me. Uh, it's just one of my one of my ham bone crazy stories. Uh, for anyone who wants to listen to it, 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 I don't know how much it has to do with the end of this planet. About I guess about as as much as anything I say. Uh, but anyway, so if you want to sit around and listen to this crazy ham bone story about my adventures down in the Guatemalan jungle. With, with, with a bunch of Mayan Indians and, and hang out with me. Uh, so, where to begin this? Uh, I, I believe, since I'm not really going back and looking through my notes because it's just occurred to me, I think this happened in February of 2006. But it could have been February 2005 or February 2007. I think it was February 2006. It's really not that important, guys. But anyway, I was. I know I was a. It was. I was a real estate agent, a clean-cut, short-haired real estate agent in uh, in Austin. And I to get away from the cold winter. I I was down in Guatemala. I took about six weeks off. As I say, I believe 2006 uh, to go down there to hang out in Guatemala, and and, and I had never been. I, whenever I go to Guatemala, I usually hang out with the gringos up there at Lake Panajachel. I, I mean Lake uh, Atitlan and Panajachel and all that. But since I was taking such an extended vacation, <clears throat> I decided I was going to go check out the Rio Dulce. Never been there in my life. Uh, the Rio Dulce is, is is very eastern Guatemala. It's the extreme easternmost part of Guatemala, that little bit of coast, the Caribbean coast. Guatemala actually has a tiny little strip of, uh, of Caribbean coast where the Rio Dulce River empties out into the Caribbean with this little seaport town named of Livingston. And how about that for a, a Latin American name, Livingston, Guatemala. And I think to this very day, uh, I haven't heard differently, but certainly in 2006, the only way to get back there was by boat. There are no, there are no roads, not even any dirt roads within 10 or 12 miles uh, you have to take, uh, as I say, I believe to this very day, you, the only way to reach this area, Rio Dulce, is, uh, is by boat. And uh, so they start out at the little town of Rio Dulce and go back and forth, up and down the river, leaving people and, and you know, residents and tourists alike off at, uh, at wherever they're heading. Uh, so I was headed to uh, a little hotel called Gringo Perdido, the lost gringo, the lost gringo, way back off the main river, up a side river for about a mile, and, and I was staying there, I think I stayed there close to a month at the, at the Gringo Perdido Hotel. It was owned by this very eccentric couple. The guy was from England. His name was Chris. His wife was from Poland. Her name was Ashka. Ashka ended up despising the ground that I that I tread upon. She thinks I am the spawn of Satan uh, to this day. But but Chris is still my buddy. Wherever you are, Chris. So anyway, I'm hanging out. Uh, I'm, I'm hanging out with these guys in their little Gringo Perdido hotel, uh, and uh, living in basically living in a, in a in a thatched roof place that Chris built. Uh, and every day, I was I was actually out on a, on a uh, on a dugout canoe. So I was paddling around my dugout canoe every day, 
and uh, I was actually trying to buy a piece of land down there. Uh, imagine that, Hambone Little Tail trying to buy a piece of land in Latin America. How many times have I been through this story? I never did end up buying it. But I already was running away with these fantasies that I was going to live 10 or 12 miles up a, up a creek in Rio Dulce, uh, in Rio Dulce, Guatemala. And now this was actually, this piece of land was inside a national park. And this, now I'm gonna go off on a little bit of tangent here that ties in with my last rant I did about the Mayan Indians. So this was, it was so remote, Rio Dulce National Park, that it was pretty much completely undiscovered uh, and, and, and uninhabited. I mean, it was still full of jaguars and everything it, it, as late as, you know, the early 1990s. It was completely an uninhabited uh, wilderness. So what happened in the early 1990s while well, all of this civil war was going on in, uh, in, in uh, Guatemala is that the Highland Mayan Indians fled. I don't blame them. They were being gunned down by the Guatemalan government. Probably still are to this day. So these Mayan Indians fled for their lives. They came down from the mountains where they had their corn fields and their bean fields and uh, their squash fields uh, and, and running for their lives from the Guatemalan government they hid back in this back in this national park. It's completely uh, off the radar national park. Oh guys what they proceeded to do is I got there in 2006 so what they had been doing for the past 14 years and I am talking the Mayan Indians for the past 14 years the these landless peasants had taken over Rio Dulce National Park just taking it over and they're completely down there destroying it uh, chopping down the trees. I mean, it is already pretty much a biological desert. There, you know, the last, they shot the last jaguar out of there, you know, probably about five years after they got there. It is, there, there's nothing left. The, the animals, I, I, did, I was amazed when I actually saw an otter that hadn't been shot. It has been nothing but a full-scale assault uh, against Mother Earth, not only against Mother Earth, but uh, but against uh, a, a protected national park, and, and and there's no way the Guatemalan government, you know, can you know I, I never saw I never saw a ranger while I was down there, I, and when I when I said this, uh, and, you know, they just laughed, and they said they said it's been two years since the cops went up this river. Apparently, some cops were. Some park rangers were came up there to talk to these the, these people taking over the land about they've completely fished out the rivers. The rivers have been completely fished out, uh, and so the cops came up there to try to bust some heads. But well, what the Mayan Indians do? They didn't. They didn't kill them. They broke their legs. They broke their legs, put them back in their boat, sent them back to Guatemala City. And there, and at least when I was down there, they hadn't seen a, a Guatemalan National Park Ranger there for two years. And so I was actually trying to buy a piece of land from a Mayan Indian who had, who had just taken over the land from the National Park. So on one level, I was buying a piece of a, officially, a piece of a Guatemala National Park. The reason I was buying this piece of land was trying to save the big trees on it inside a national park from the Mayan Indians who are going to cut the trees down. And then my guess is those trees are long gone by now. But I had this little gringo fantasy that I was going to buy this and, and I was reintroducing orchids down there. What was going on is the planet eaters were now coming in and I don't know how this is all tied in together. They were bringing in a power line right across the national park because there was no there was no electricity. There had never been any electricity. Here I am and the you know no electricity at all. 
at, while I was down there. Imagine that, in the few weeks I was down there, the, uh, the, the planet eaters, some Guatemalan power company, no doubt paid for by some uh, international bank, probably the inner, I'm guessing the Inter-American Development Bank or whatever it's called, was bringing in a, was bringing in a goddamn power line well, I mean, the trees are huge down there, guys. So, of course, the, the, the power line could not have trees falling on it. Are you follow me? So they had to make the swath of absolute destruction of this gorgeous rainforest uh, as wide as the trees falling in from either side. So it was like a 300-foot wide path of absolute scorched earth destruction to protect the power line running down the middle to service the not just the Mayan Indians but this growing number of rich gringos mainly this crazy ass Texan building a marina down there all these people were clamoring who had just taken over this national park were clamoring for power and they were and they were getting served, and so I so what what happens when you cut down these trees is all of these gorgeous orchids, these absolutely beautiful orchids that need to live up in trees, had now fallen on the ground. I'm talking millions, millions uh, of these orchids. Any one of them would have cost thirty bucks at Home Depot. So I was out with my Mayan Indian guide. We were out in our dugout canoes. Uh, I, I believe it was on a Wednesday morning. We were we, we would we would paddle up to these to these destroyed trees. I mean, every one of them, guys, it would break your heart. And and we were literally walking up and down the trunks of these mangled trees, picking out specimens of these orchids and we were going to move them to this piece of property that I bought and I was actually going to reestablish these orchids in the giant trees on the property I have so we were out there doing that as we were out there as me and this Mayan Indian were out there in a dugout canoe picking out orchids you know guys is is absolutely absurd we were uh, uh, approached by this very excited other Mayan Indian saying that all hell was breaking loose in Livingston, which was about 10, 15 miles downriver. You know, in Livingston, what had happened is, is, <laughs> is, is, is that this crazy mob of pissed off Mayan Indians had taken over the army base in Livingston without firing a shot that this mob of pissed off Mayans had, had gone into Livingston and kidnapped 29 Guatemalan soldiers and had them, they had taken over the military base and, and had kidnapped these, these, these 29 soldiers and they were on their way up the river. They were in Livingston. Now he had been down there and then raced back to spread the word. And uh, so what what had gone down apparently, there was this guy, and I can't remember his name, this really crazy militant Mayan, anti-gringo, anti-the-man Mayan Indian, uh, kind of a Robin Hood, and he had made a name for himself. What he would do is that he was terrorizing gringos who were down there, who had bought land down there. Uh, uh, and he would actually, he never killed a gringo, but he would go down there, but he would beat him up. I mean, he would tie him up and, and he would pistol whip him and say, gringo, this is our land. You're invading. You got no business being here. If you know what's good for you, get your honky ass out of Guatemala and go back home. Well, needless to say, I would have taken the man's advice. Uh, so what he was doing, that's what he, that's what he had been doing for years, was uh, terrorizing these gringos, and then once the gringos left, then he was sending out these Mayan squatters 
whose version of it probably correct that this lamb belonged to them anyway and screw you you damn gringo well anyway he had been finally arrested in uh, in uh, Rio Dulce he had been arrested and carted off to prison well he was kind of like their Robin Hood and uh, so th th this th th this mob of, of pissed off Mayans from Rio Dulce had gone down there and kidnapped these 20, <laughs> these 29 Guatemalan soldiers. Uh, it's just not something you do. If you want to really piss off the Guatemalan army, just go kidnap 29 of their own people. Uh, and so anyway, they, 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 they were literally hot in the process of hog tying these guys and 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 they were going to come back up river but nobody knew quite where but someone is somewhere in the neighborhood and uh so this was the story so we didn't know what was going on so i'm now out there with two mayan indians in in dugout canoes out in the middle of the jungle in this tortured jungle for this power line project with my canoe full of orchids so we go flying back to the Gringo Perdido. Uh, to, you know, what's going on? Well, we get there. I hadn't been there five minutes. And, and Chris and uh, uh, Chris was just hearing the story. Well, it so happened that his wife, Ashka, she was in Livingston while this shit was going down. Ashka, this, you know, this Gringa, what was in Livingston. We didn't know if she was being kidnapped, too. And uh, Chris was beside himself, uh, you know, worrying, you know, wondering whether his wife was dead or alive. And so we're sitting there out on the dock, out on the dock in, uh, in Gringo Perdido. And now here comes this crazy-ass Texan. Oh, God, I think his name was Mike. Great guy, a major, major stoner. Well, well Mike was building this, this fancy gringo uh, marina for all of these yacht owners, these sailboat owners and yacht owners and he comes down there and what he's doing in his power boat is he is handing out sawed off shotguns to all the gringos. He is telling, you know, there the word was out now that, that the word was out there telling all of the gringos to clear the hell out uh, Rio Dulce. I mean the 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 residents, the tourists, everyone. If you know what is good for you, you will get your honky ass out of this jungle. You know that it it is the the Indians are riled up. They're pissed off at the gringos. They got this guy in jail. They've kidnapped these soldiers. Pack up your shit and get the hell out of here. And uh, Mike, you know, and a good old Texan, he, he, hell with that! I'm getting me a sawed off shotgun, and them Indians come up there and pull some shit with me, and I'm gonna start shooting some damn Indians from, uh, you know, from the, from my marina. We decided not to take a sawed off shotgun. Chris and I uh, uh, declined his kind gift of a sawed off shotgun to defend ourselves from the riled up Mayan Indians, two of whom were sitting on the dock with us. Uh, so Mike goes, he goes flying off in his motorboat and a hand out, sawed off shotguns, other gringos. Please, Chris and I, we don't know what to do at this point. I'd say, I think this is Wednesday, guys. Probably uh, about 11 or in the morning, maybe noon. And uh, again, we don't know if Ashka is even dead or alive. Well, it so happens that a couple of hours later, here comes Ashka motoring back up. She, somehow she's made it out of, out of Livingston, you know, with her life. And uh, so she's trying to give her version of the events. You know, this happened, is, you know, she was there when the mob came in. She didn't see the actual takeover of the of the military base she she wisely saw uh, this gang of uh, of armed Mayan Indians uh, moving into Livingston she didn't stick around to investigate she got her gringa ass on the boat and, and back home to the gringo perdido hotel 
And so here we were, we were all back, just three of us. I was the only guest at the Gringo Paradiso Hotel. So there are these, these three gringos. So the, the Mayan Indians, they get in their dugout canoes and disappear into the jungle. So it's just the three of us. So Chris, you know, he's packing up his shit to leave and uh, just assuming that, uh, that Asha's going along with it. Well, she, she says, hell with that. She, she goes, I'm not going to sit here and roll over to a bunch of crazy Mayan Indians and give up my hotel and lose everything here that she was going to stand and fight. I mean, she wasn't protected. She didn't have a gun or anything. She was just going to stand on her moral ground that she was doing nothing wrong, that she wasn't one of these, these, these big bad gringos that whoever this guy in prison, they even knew this guy and apparently he had given them a, had given them a pass. So Chris and Oshka get in this big ass fight. Oh, this marriage, I hope to hell it's over by now. This is a marriage that, that had to end and hopefully it is, is gone by now. Uh, so anyway, they're in the, Chris and, and, and uh, Oshka are in this huge damn fight about whether to stay or go. And I say, guys, I said, you two work it out. I, I, I said, I'm going, I said, if you stay, I'm sticking with you. If you decide to go, I said, I'm going to hop in the boat with you and get my ass back to civilization. I said, whichever, whichever way you, you uh, figure this out. Well, I look, well, guess what time it is, guys? It, it is the, it, it is 420 in the afternoon. I said, hell with it. I don't know. Uh, you guys are figuring this out. Uh, I'm going to go smoke a bowl. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go make a pina colada. So I go into the hotel bar. I make a pina colada. I load up a bowl of weed. And I say, screw this. I go back to the dock. So I'm down there all alone. They're up, they're up on the hill in the hotel having this screaming domestic dispute. I go back down to the dock to drink a pina colada and smoke a bowl at, at, at 420. So I, I'm sitting there enjoying my bowl of weed and my pina colada and I hear this this, this big, I hear this, 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 this boat approaching from uh, Livingston. It's coming up. We're on this little bitty side stream and uh, all we know is that somewhere out in the middle of this huge jungle is, are 29 kidnapped soldiers, probably hogtied and uh, under control of these, of these crazy Mayan uh, kidnappers. Well, guys, guess where the uh, guess where these crazy ass uh, guy, this band of Mayan Indians and their soldiers were coming. They were coming right down towards me. I was sitting here. There, there is the creek. It's just like me and what used to be Williamson Creek. Right? I was this close. And what it was was this giant dugout. I'm, I'm talking like a like a 40 foot dugout canoe with uh, with you know with a outboard motor on the back of it. And they're coming right up by me. And I guess I should have gotten up and run, but I, I was just so amazed. And of course, I was stoned off my ass. I was sitting down there on my easy chair. And they come by. And, and there's all these soldiers. They are, they are on the bow of the boat. Their, their hands are tied behind their back. They're, they're, they're gagged. I mean, it was the, the, the gringo nightmare scenario. And, there, and, and, there's, and there's all these uh, Mayan Indians swooping, you know, and hollering that they, uh, and, and they come, they're, they're 12 feet in front of me, and these crazy Indians, they're just waving at me, hola, hola, so well, and they're pointing down to these kidnapped soldiers, and they're, and they're uh, laughing about it, and celebrating, and high-fiving, and they're just waving at me. Because I've known these guys uh, for a couple of weeks, and, and, and this, this is like we're old friends. And I'm just sitting out on my dock having my pina colada and smoking my bowl. And they just disappear even deeper into the jungle upstream above me. So this is 420 on Wednesday afternoon. And uh, Thursday was just kind of tense. We knew 
that uh, we knew that somewhere upstream from the hotel, these 29 uh, Guatemalan soldiers were being held hostage. So all day Thursday, I just kind of kept close to the hotel. Uh, it, was, it was a little bit tense. We, we couldn't really get any information. Uh, it was, this was the biggest news story in Guatemala all day Thursday that, uh, you know, it was the number one news story in Guatemala was that they, the Guatemalan army was trying to find these missing 29 soldiers so they could come kick some, uh, you know, come kick some Mayan Indian ass. And, and you know damn well where this story would have ended. Uh, when they found those soldiers, they would have brought in the choppers, they would have gone in there, they would have killed as many damn Mayan Indians, men, women, and children as they needed to, to, uh, to get those soldiers back. They, did, they just didn't know where they were. Well, where they were, guys, was about a half a mile from my hotel, is where they were. So this was going on all day Thursday. They were saying that if, if, if there's any gringos left, get your ass out. There were these rumors that there were 1,500, uh, a mob of 1,500 Mayan Indians pouring in there, uh, pissed off and ready to kick some gringo ass. And here we are sitting there, the gringo perdido, just the three of us. So Thursday came and went, and uh, so Friday morning, I, I say, I've had enough of this. I, I, you know, I, 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 I've just simply had enough. I need to go find out what's going on. So I find this other crazy gringo. I think he was from Washington or Oregon. This crazy gringo who lived in a house upstream. He was going in, the, so I, I hopped in the boat with him, and we went into Livingston. It, it looked to me like, I mean, Livingston was completely, totally calm. It was just another Friday morning in Livingston, Guatemala, and, the, and you better believe the, the headlines on the Guatemalan paper, you know, that this, it was the biggest news all over every television station, every newspaper. It was all in Spanish, so I'm trying to, so uh, I, I, I'm sitting there, guys, eating a hot fudge sundae, a gringo, in the middle of Livingston, Guatemala. Uh, I get a hot fudge Sunday, and I get down to the internet uh, to see what's going on. And my buddy Harv had sent me uh, in the headline was Hamon. Does this have anything to do with you? And uh, so at least I got to read the uh, the English version of what was going on. But as I say, this was you know people were com it, so it had hit the world wire now so all over the planet this story was being told about this indian uprising you know the u.s state department you know and, and here i am guys i'm one kilometer from the you know the biggest indian uprising in the in the past 10 or 12 years in guatemala eating a hot fudge sundae in the middle of it was i i, I said screw this so when he went on back, I went on back home with him, and, and Saturday morning I get up. Oh, but anyway, I'm sorry. They had, uh, they had, they, the reporters had actually gotten through to them, and where they were, they were in the village schoolhouse, just just right around a couple of bends. They were up there in the schoolhouse, interviewing the, uh, you know, interviewing the the kidnappers. And showing pictures of the uh, the 29 soldiers. Now, one of these soldiers was diabetic, and he did die. That was too bad. So one of the soldiers did die of uh, he didn't have his insulin, and and uh, and the kidnappers were apologizing for this. That they they said they would have left the guy behind if they had known he was diabetic. So he did die, but they still had the other 28 of them, and they were you know trying to work out a truce. And, uh, and the Guatemalan government was saying, you better bring those guys back. And so they're having this standoff about releasing this Robin Hood or we'll release these, blah, 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 you know, the usual standoff. So uh, the lines in the sand were drawn. Uh, so this is what happened on Friday. So I get up Saturday morning and I just say hell with it that, that I needed to get these orchids 
in uh, back in the tree. So uh, I'm just sitting in a pair of, uh, just had my swimsuit on. So I get up there in, uh, in my swimsuit and into my into my uh, dugout canoe all by myself, and I'm paddling upstream towards where these 29 soldiers are being held, tied up, and bound and stuff. My, the land I was buying was about halfway between the Gringo Perdido Hotel and the schoolhouse where the kidnappers had their, you know, had these people hogtied. And so I just paddle up and so about this time now there's choppers in the air, there's Guatemalan helicopters. They know where the guys are so we, we, you've got these army helicopters circling, figuring how they can get in there and take out some Indians. I'm walking around you know, I, I'm walking around my my piece of land in my uh, in my swimsuit, putting orchids up in my trees, climbing up on the ladder, nailing orchids to to my trees, like I you know like I'm in South Austin, Texas, in my backyard in South Austin, Texas. I'm at this point probably a quarter mile from the schoolhouse. Uh, where where the biggest story uh, in Guatemala is unfolding, the epicenter. I'm out there attacking orchids to trees. And I remember, so here come these two kind of scary looking Mayan dudes. They come paddling up in their canoe and they're going, Gringo, are you loco? You know, I, I, they were just kind of looking out for me. I didn't know what they were up to. I mean, they easily, could, I guess, could have hogtied me and thrown me up. They were just a little bit concerned about my own safety and uh, thinking that you have, they were basically telling me you have lost your mind. They were pointing to the, to the choppers, to the, uh, to the army in the air and saying things are getting ready to get really ugly down here while you're going around uh, attacking orchids to trees. And I remember during the thing, I came across this giant, you know, she's probably about seven feet long boa constrictor that I stumbled upon in my little operation. I remember picking up this boa constrictor about as big around as my arm. He was going all up over my arm and down this arm and I'm holding up <laughs> I'm holding up this boa constrictor to these two Mayan Indians. Their eyes are like, you know, like this. And going, you know, saying, Este culebra es mi hermano! And, you know, saying that, that he's my friend, that the snake is my brother, and don't be killing this boa constrictor. And the guy is going, Gringo, you're sitting there telling us about a, about a boa constrictor. When you're getting ready to get caught in the crossfire between the Guatemalan army and uh, this just shows you how seriously I took it. So anyway, this, uh, I finished my orchids and I went on back. And so now it is Saturday afternoon at 4.20. And I'm sitting out there uh, Saturday afternoon at 4.20 having my daily pina colada in my bowl out there by myself on the dock. I, uh, I don't know how many gringos were still left in a 10 mile radius at this point. It was another nice Saturday afternoon in the jungle for me. So now I'm sitting here and guess what I hear coming from upstream is the same boat and they've got the big white surrender flag on the front. So there's this white surrender flag. And now here's all the soldiers. Well, they, well of course one of them is dead. That was too bad. But the other 28 guys, they're no longer tied up. They're not gagged or anything. And it looked to me, when the, so here come the, the kidnappers and the soldiers, it looked to me, guys, suspiciously, like they were buddies. That they seemed to be sitting around, joking around. So, they, so here comes the, the boat full of, of, of Mayan kidnappers and their victims. They're all smiling. Hola, gringo! Hola! And, 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 I, and I'm waving at them with their, with their white flag and they go steaming on down the river to points unknown. And guys, I, I really, that was the end of that. Uh, I really don't know what happened to the story. I'm, I'm going to have to go look it up. I, I, I don't know whatever happened to uh, whether they ever did release that guy 
whether he's still in prison, whether he's still out uh, pistol whipping gringos. Uh, but all I, but one thing I'm sure of is six years later that the uh, the former Rio Dulce National Park, this absolutely once pristine jungle, is more butchered than ever. It's probably, you know, between the Mayan Indians, you know, hacking out their little cornfields in places where you have no business putting a cornfield and the gringos going down there building their marinas and the power lines and everything else. Uh, uh, the, the only the only postscript that I have to this story is uh, is that is that the the ultimate loser out of this whole uh, scene is once again is once again Mother Earth while the Mayan Indians and the gringos and all of this are battling it out, who's taking it in the shorts from both sides, from both sides is our mama. And it's just one more, one more piece of rainforest you can, you, you, you can just kiss goodbye to. You know, all the animals were gone when I was down there six years ago, and the trees were falling at a rapid rate. And uh, the situation has only gotten more bleak for Mother Earth while everyone else just figures it out. And with that note, I will say bye, guys.